it is a sweltering 32 degrees in the Algarve today. So I'm gonna head out of state for a little bit, you know, to Alentejo, where according to the weather forecast is 37 degrees. Makes sense. It makes even less sense when your 1990 Landy Simba doesn't even have AC. But here we are. This is the first kind of full-on adventure in our new, new slash old Land Rover Defender 90. It is a 1999, but I don't have like camera setups on it yet. I'm going to eventually have like GoPro attachments in places like the front and maybe by the tire and inside as well. But that's gonna take time because I have to order some stuff off of Amazon or the internet or go to a camera shop nearby. And I will do that eventually. But for now, all I have is my GoPro 360 on the interior. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for like this totally to be set up. Eventually I'm gonna put like a bikini top on the back so it's kind of half open. And I think it'll be cool. So excited for the future with Simba and Simba's locked. But for now, we're gonna drive about an hour and a half into the interior of Portugal to Alentejo. Oh, just a quick FYI as we head to Alentejo. That's Simba the Land Rover that's gonna be sporting a bikini top. Not me, in case you were worried. What a difference from the Algarve. It is really, really hot and dusty and dry and turns out there's no ocean here. The Algarve is obviously beautiful, but this kind of feels like totally unique. Uh, it feels like Africa. It feels like I'm in safari country in South Africa. It's just wide open plains of dusty landscape and it's kind of beautiful. I'm heading to a place I think is called Mertola, although I'm not sure. Um, and it's still about a half an hour down this road. Simba's loving the country roads, but they forgot to uh, introduce shocks to the people building the Defender. <laughs> it's a little bit bumpy. Mertola is right in the middle of a small national park called Parque Natural do Valle do Guadiana. Amazingly, there are over a hundred Iberian links in this area. I need to get Morton Hilmer out here to find them with me. You know, once the weather cools down to temperatures more suitable to a Canadian and a Dane. Okay, we made it to Mertola. It is awesome here, but it is extremely hot. Thankfully, there's a little bit of cloud, so it won't be that bad. It's already 7 p.m., so it should be all right. Um, I am gonna do some walking around because I have no idea where I wanna photograph. When I was driving into town, I think I saw a cool spot, so I'm gonna head that way, but uh, like a quick location scout wander through town coming up. The town of Mertola is a UNESCO site, and a quick wander will show why. Before the Portuguese reclaimed it in the 13th century, it was home to the Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, and Moors. These days, it seems like it's home to very few. It's quiet. Okay, how cool is this? You've got this town here leading straight up to this castle up on the hill. It's really, really nice, and down here at least, there's nobody, there's not tourists or locals. It's really quiet. But my plan is to photograph somewhere down the valley across this really cool bridge on the way here. I think that's the shot I want. But I think the curious traveler in me also wants to go up to the castle. So that's where we're gonna head. As a photographer, I'm already regretting my plan not to stay the night. This town overlooking the Guadiana River is epic. There are dozens of photos to be made here. Turns out, climbing up a hill in uh, plus 37 degree weather is hard, but it's totally worth it. This town is absolutely beautiful. It's just so nice. I think there's definitely more photos than just the one that I was hoping to make, but I just have sunset, so. I'm going to keep trying to make that photo and I think I'm up at the castle. 
finally. And I think it's under construction. <laughs> if you know me, you know there's one thing I always seem to find in my travels, construction. But thankfully, the views from up here don't have a building site on them. Whew, yeah, so the castle's closed, but I've kind of just been walking around the outside of it. I don't know if you can see into the backlight, but there's a bridge down there that's really awesome. And so that's my goal, I guess, to hike down this hill across the bridge and then find an angle that has the bridge in the foreground and the castle in the background. I don't know yet if that's possible, but I think it should be. I also think I should have been smart and driven over there. It's so easy to get location FOMO at a place like this. Uh, I think the place I'm going to is going to be really cool, but I'm also looking straight across the, the river here and thinking it'd be cool to have kind of a flat image of, of town straight across. So yeah, a bit of photographer FOMO going on, but we're going to keep uh, going. Original plan, going to stick to it. Yeah, I'm stubborn. My mom calls me determined and perseverant, but we all know it's just stubbornness. There might be a better photo behind me, but I'm sticking to my plan. Even if it means every cactus thorn in Alentejo gets stuck in my legs. Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, I'm on the bridge and I'm having my doubts about whether I'm gonna be able to make this photo work. You can see the castle up there. I gotta find a way to get this bridge in the foreground and some water and the castle and it's starting to feel like it might be a little bit too much. So uh, I'm gonna keep looking around and hopefully I can find something to make this work. But I'm having my doubts. I'm having one of my mini, I wish I was smarter moments. <laughs> I think there's probably a photo here if I can get down low to the river, but I forgot my shoes in the car and I'm in flip flops and it's desert and rocky here. So I'm gonna have to try to scramble down in my flip-flops. And then even then, I don't know if it's gonna work. Such an idiot. I'm down at the bottom, but I am absolutely covered in these thistles. I mean, it's insane. And I'm gonna guess they come off Ah, no, they don't come off just by pulling. I'm gonna guess they come off if I pour water on me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm absolutely covered in these things. And the worst part is this isn't even good down here. You're too low, the castle's hidden. So I'm gonna have to keep hiking through and then try to hike up. And hopefully I can get rid of all these thistles because it's super painful. I am exhausted, stupidly. I'm right back basically where I started, except for the roads just right there. I probably could have just hopped over and tried this, but it's sunset in like 15 minutes. So even though this isn't ideal, this is the photo I'm gonna make. Oh man, I am like kind of in pain. I've got like a rash from these thistles and sweaty and hot and happy because I think this photo works. It's a little bit unbalanced. I'd like to get a little bit farther there, but there's like a giant thorn bush in the way. But the light's hitting the castle. I'm using a four stop medium grad ND. The camera's stuck in a thistle. Four stop medium grad ND to hold in some of the light on the top. And then right now it's F16, one third of a second, but I'm actually gonna put in a six stop filter and try a 30 second exposure to get some movement in these clouds. This is definitely a example of sometimes you need to go through a little bit of pain to get the best photo. I'm definitely in some pain, but I'm also happy. Stubborn and stupid, but the photo won't show any of that, I hope. One of my rules for photography is that if you're comfortable taking a picture, you're probably not in the best place you could be, or at least not the best place for a unique photograph. I'm definitely not comfortable, but watching clouds roll overhead, I could care less about the scrapes on my knees. 
Looking up at the castle and the views down the valley, I could almost care less about the photo. Okay, so I've opted for a bit of a more narrow photo because the clouds that were lingering perfectly have kind of hidden behind the castle now. But I think it's fine. I actually like the tighter composition. I think I'm probably around 28 millimeters. I'm just excited to see clouds. I haven't seen clouds in so long. So this has been fun, although painful. And now because I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm gonna try to get out of here and then go try to see that other location just to see if it's as epic as I thought it could be. Okay, so I've come across the river uh, in the vehicle, so that's why I don't have my bag on my shoulder. And I, I called this video, sometimes the best photos take a little pain, but sometimes the best photos are just the easy photo. So I'm at this spot that I thought would probably be a good photo. And I think it's actually a much superior photo to the one I took. There's even really nice clouds behind it right now. I probably could still take it. It's just a little bit backlit and there's actually probably a sunrise spot, so I don't feel that bad. I'll just have to come here at sunrise some point, at some point. But check this out. The river leading straight up to the old town, castle walls and castle. Absolutely perfect. Definitely, definitely have to come back here. Uh, this area, El Antejo, is very well known amongst Portuguese people, but foreigners really don't know it at all. It is, from my first visit, spectacular. I think there's gonna be some fun to be had in this area. I was not getting bored of seascapes, but I was looking to do something a little bit different, and Alentejo is just full of villages like this and towns like this, so I'm excited. As for the next video, it's gonna start right now in my life because I'm gonna go out and look for some astrophotography opportunities here. I'm actually gonna put together an entire guide on how to photograph stars, kind of like an intro uh, guide to photographing stars. So that's gonna be on the next video as long as I can find somewhere to do it. I'll see you guys there. Peace.